to honor you, I still come with you and uh, around the word of God and I share with you again. The title today is Come to the Potter, but come let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy. We honor you for all that you have done. And yes, Lord, thank you that you have already prepared the way for us. That we do not, do not need to search for a way to, to, to look for, a, for, for some God, some way that will have mercy on us. But we, through your grace, can know that we can come to you. And through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth and life. And we honor and praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Now, let me start by reading Jeremiah 18, verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turned from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now, every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And lastly, verse 12. And they said, There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. So can you think of a greater act of love and self-discipline? God sent his prophet to a people and God knew that they had already hardened their hearts. And not only that, that they have already decided not to listen to God. All knowing and omnipresent, yet he still comes and he still hopes against all hope that they will turn back to him. You must understand that, that, that God knew what was in their hearts. Yet he sent his prophet and says, as a last time, I'm sending you to the potter's house so that you can see how a potter works and understand that I want to use you. And even as the potter took the one piece of clay in the vessel that he was busy and it didn't come out the way he wanted to and it was marred, he didn't throw the clay away, but he, he started afresh. He just needed it again and started afresh and made a new vessel. And God came to this people, this hardened people, this sinful people. He says, if you will only allow me to, to reform you as the potter, I can do it. I am able to do it, but you must allow me to. If the clay were to run away in some way, it couldn't be changed. And God came and you know what the answer was of this people? They said, you know what? Let's just continue. There will be other prophets after this one. There will be other people. Why will God do this? Why will God send this prophet down to a place to give him a picture so that he can paint a picture to this people, like speaking in parables almost? Well, 2 Peter tells us. In 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3 verse 9 we read, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So He is still the God of which David wrote in Psalms 103 verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. But look at man's heart. The conniving people rather devise a plan to finish off the prophet, to silence him with their words. Let us just 
uh, uh, continue with their own way. They debated that he cannot be a real prophet because he doesn't listen to what the priests and the leaders want him to say. People, if, it, if that isn't the spirit that is in our world today, so today, you know what? If he don't, sp if he speaks against the establishment, if he speaks against what's going on in the world, then he's not a real prophet. And this is why, why, why the church and the world are in such a danger of falling for for the devices of false prophets. It is because the true ones are being lambasted. The true ones are being put down. Now you need to go with the flow. You need, don't rock the boat. What they actually mean is that they like sin better. That repentance and salvation needs to wait a little longer. They will wait until another prophet and another priest one day speak to them again. But to silence God's voice in your spirit is dangerous. God is very clear in His word. He says, today when you hear His voice, today, He says, come let us talk uh, about this. Let us finish this. One of the well-known evangelists in America, Jimmy Swaggart, was asked once to go and speak to a young man. His parents has been, uh, born again parents, has been praying for him. He was totally on the wrong uh, road and, and doing his own thing. And and Jimmy made an appointment with, with him one morning before work and, and he says to him, come let, I'll buy you a breakfast. I want to speak to you on behalf of your parents. And he was clear about this and he, and he didn't mince his words and he, and he really spoke to this young man as a father would to a son. And while he was speaking, the Holy Spirit was, was so true to his nature that, that the Holy Spirit uh, just convicted this young man and he sat there with tears in his eyes. And the Holy Spirit started to, 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 to work with his heart. Yet in spite of the Holy Spirit's work and, and, and drawing in his heart, it came to a point where, where he started shouting at the messenger of God, at, at, at the evangelist. And even the, the people around, everybody heard it, what he was saying and what he was shouting. Just as the people acted up against the prophet in, in the scripture that we've read. And he, and he got up and he, and he took his little uh, uh, container with his bread for the day and he says, I shall not make right. If I die, I die. If I go to hell, I go to hell. So be it. And he stormed outside, leaving the crying evangelist at the table. And as he stormed out, the, the diner was just right on the street. Everybody heard this. The, 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 the slamming on of massive brakes, sound of a horn, and a dull thud. And as they were, or ran outside, outside was a large 18 wheel truck, now jackknife, pitch, pitch black. And underneath the chrome bumper was the bleeding body of a dying young man. The chrome bumper had a plate on it, right above where the young man's body was lying and the inscription on that was hell's angel you see he made a choice he made a choice to to ignore the drawing of the holy spirit he made a choice to slap god's hand away and the enemy plays for keeps and he had his hell's angel there to take him to where he will never never ever wanted to go if he realized really realized what God was trying to save him from. If you choose the world, I can guarantee you the world, the, the devil will take you up on your choice and your words. But know this, there is no mercy in this world. God, God comes and his mercy triumphs over judgment. Jeremiah 17 verse 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel all who forsake you shall be put to shame. They who depart from you and me, your prophet, shall disappear like writing upon the ground because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. I want to encourage you today in the voice of the prophet or in the words of the prophet then and says, come to the potter. Go to the potter's house again. There are so many 
beautiful examples, even in our day and age, where God took people to certain places. One well-known example is where God took a lady that, that wanted to know how God works with, with someone, and, and, and she went to a silversmith. And, and he showed her the way that, that he prepares uh, in the crucible, uh, how he melts down the silver, the rough material to become silver. And she says to him, how do you know that when this silver is right to be taken off of the, out of the crucible? And he says, lady, I had to stay very close to the crucible. I've got to take the same heat by watching it. But the moment everything looks like silver and the dross disappears, I know it is right. And that, that, that is so encouraging because God is in the storm with you. God hasn't left you. God is, isn't, isn't sitting on the, on the pavilion uh, or in the benches looking down at you suffering. No, He's with you in this battle. Taking the same heat. He has paid the price so that you and I may look like Him. Allow Him to take your broken life. Allow Him to take your, your challenges and to reform it and to make something useful of it again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with this short, short message this morning, we come repenting that we so often run away from you when we should be running towards you. Whenever life doesn't treat us well, whenever the world comes up against us, instead of running to you, Father, the Bible is very clear, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Yet we run outside. We run away from the very one that can save us, can change us, can protect us. Today we want to come and we want to come into your presence and we want to say Lord here am I thank you for all the times that you've looked after me that you've protected me that you've kept me healthy and where I wasn't healthy where you've made me healthy you've healed me and today we want to come before you again we honor you we praise you and we adore you and we vow to give you and you alone the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Savior Amen Today, come with me to the potter's house. God bless you. Empty and broken, I came back to him, a vessel. So scarred with sin, but he did not despair, he started over again, and I bless the day he didn't throw the clay. I stumble and I fall and my vessel breaks. He just picks up the pieces. He doesn't throw the clay away.
a vessel.